Hi, let's continue our discussion on the reduction of risk potential for the NCLEX and also safe and quality nursing care kapatid pagdating naman sa ating Philippine Nurse Licensure Examination. And for this time, we'll start with the discussion on the complete blood count, okay, or CBC. Big hit and big time for the board examination kapatid. So, class, ang pinakamalaga lang na malaman natin dito is the normal. Let's just try to have a review on the normal ranges, okay, and then of course, there are also abbreviations and what are their normal values, okay? So, alam natin that when things deviate, something is wrong, okay? So, for your hemoglobin, for your hemoglobin, tandaan natin kapatid, hemoglobin, okay? So, abbreviations for that is SGP and the normal. So, we have your normal for your female, okay? For your female, that's 12 to 16 grams per dl okay while for your male kapatid naman it's actually 14 to 18 grams per dl okay so that's the normal okay so hematocrit kapatid hematocrit so kapag sinabi natin hematocrit naman that's hct for female normal of this one okay is 37 so this is expressed actually in percentage so this is 37 to 48 percent upon the other hand for your male uh, that's actually 42 to 52 okay 42 to 52 percent okay so these are very important workers class hemoglobin and hematocrit uh, including your red blood cells okay red blood cells i will write this down here red blood cells Okay, remember this one. These are your RBCs. Okay, and um, for your RBCs, kapatid, ang normal po natin, this is 4.5 to 5.5 million, okay, per uh, cubic millimeter. Yan. So, tandaan po natin, kapatid, kapag sinabi natin RBC, these are very important for determining your uh, anemia. Okay, these are very important um, indicators also for your shock. Okay, for your shock as well, kapatid, or impending shock and um, for your bleeding tendencies and hemorrhage. So, mainam naman tayo po natin, no, ang ating pong hemoglobin, hematocrit, and your RBCs. Okay, so next, let's also have, kapatid, okay, let's also have your uh, white blood cells. Okay, white blood cells. Kapatid, kapag sinabi nating white blood cells, it has very important, uh, uh, it's a very important uh, marker naman pagdating po sa ating, I, we, I know that we all know this one, pagdating po sa ating um, infection. It's a very good indicator of infection. So, kapag may leukocytosis, that is beyond um, 10,000, at kapag may leukopenia naman, that's less than 5,000. Okay? So, tandaan po natin yan. Uh, this one is a very good indicator of your infection. So, it, ito kagad ang tinitingnan kapatid. Say, for example, in the case of your appendicitis, um, titingnan kagad if WBC no, is actually high. So, that's an indication now of uh, infection. And last but not the least, of course, no, we'll be having your platelet. Okay? Your platelet. Kapatid, kapag sinabi natin platelet, um, I know that uh, you know the normal range for this one that's 150,000 to 400,000 okay cubic millimeter so yeah so pagdating naman dito kapatid ang um, uh, one thing that we should be bearing on our minds that this is very very important lalo lalo na class pagdating po sa ating dengue okay big word dengue fever so we are actually monitoring your platelet levels and also for those other um tendencies kapatid na kung saan meron pong um bleeding tendencies also aggregation of your platelets it's very important okay so it's a very good marker okay so let's continue to your blood chemistry and for the NCLEX we call it as your metabolic panel yan but before that uh, this can be divided into two. So we have your, let's discuss, kapatid, your what we call as your coagulation panel. Okay? So first we have your coagulation panel. Okay? Coagulation, coagulation panel. Coagulation panel. Kapatid, kapag sinabi natin coagulation panel, three things ang ating pong tatandaan dito. We have your APTT, APTT, which is your 
activated activated uretis down activated thromboplastin through thrombo yan uh, activated thrombo thrombo plastin time okay activated thromboplastin time so that's first one aptt so the aptt actually tests this one tests your what this tests tests the intrinsic tandaan po natin the intrinsic coagulation the intrinsic coagulation cascade okay the intrinsic coagulation cascade okay so remember that this one tests the intrinsic coagulation cascade not on anticoagulants okay not on anticoagulants so um remember that the uh, therapeutic on on heparin kapatid no uh, the the therapeutic aptt no the therapeutic aptt is on a certain range okay tanda po natin this is for heparin okay for heparin the therapeutic therapeutic okay therapeutic aptt okay aptt is 1.5 to 2.5 okay times normal okay okay so while let's have another thing we have your another thing here big time also for the NCLEX and the PNLE we have your pro thrombin time okay pro okay pro thrombin tandaan po natin pro thrombin time okay or pt okay for this one this actually tests if your abtt tests the intrinsic coagulation kapatid dito naman this one tests the what T tests the extrinsic okay the extrinsic coagulation cascade okay the extrinsic coagulation 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 cascade okay so dito naman Big word and big time for the bar exam. The normal is 10 to 20 seconds. Okay? 10 to 20 seconds. Okay? And remember that the, this, uh, this coagulation panel very, very important markers. Now, for lalo-lalo na pagdating po sa ating pong mga bleeding uh, disorders or bleeding problems. Okay? Another thing also is we have your INR or we call it sometimes as your international. Okay? international kapatid normalized or your INR normalized okay ratio okay or in INR international normalized ratio or your INR so this one it is it is actually it is calculated tandaan po natin it is calculated from a PT or your prothrombin time and is used tandaan natin and is used to monitor to monitor what to monitor how well okay how well warfarin is working so tandaan natin that it's for your warfarin big word for the board exam warfarin is the concern of your INR so remember that one so again this is not on anticoagulants okay so the for those people kapatid na taking warfarin okay for those people class na taking warfarin so the therapeutic INR should be okay therapeutic INR is actually okay 2 2 3 tandaan po natin that's the normal that we can have okay so again and again um for your um for your easy uh, memorization, we will be having a memory trick here. Kapag sinabi natin kapatid na, um, okay, when we say, okay, pag, pag sinabi po natin kapatid na uh, heparin, okay, again, for your heparin, for your memory trick here, okay, when we say heparin, again, you have there the two letter uh, T, okay, that's P, T, T. so we form it forms actually letter h so that's for heparin okay well for your warfarin only one t okay uh pt po ang uh ginagamit po natin there okay so that's it kapatid tandaan po natin 
that this is your uh, coagulation panel. We have there three big things. APTT are ac activated, um, activated partial thromboplastin time. We have your prothrombin time and also your INR kapatid. Okay, so another thing, big thing also, of course, no, just before we uh, move on to our next one, let's discuss your uh, metabolic panel, the metabolic panel itself. So what we'll be talking about here is your actually, let's jump up to your electrolytes, kapatid. Okay, your electrolytes. So alam natin to, what are those electrolytes that we know? Okay, so it's very important also, kapatid, na alam natin yung mga normal levels. So, normal value. Normal value of your electrolytes. Okay? Normal value. Okay, so, big thing for your sodium. Okay, kapatid, kapag sodium, kapatid, normal for that is actually 135 to 145, okay, milli equivalent per liter. Okay, milli equivalent per liter. Okay, also for your potassium. Potassium kapatid, that's big time, 3.5 to 5, okay, milli equivalent, okay, per liter. How about your calcium kapatid? Okay, so, so for your calcium, that's 9, okay, to 10.5 milligrams per dl. Yan, so while your magnesium, Okay, while your magnesium, kapatid, magnesium naman, okay, while your magnesium, that's 1.5 to 2.5 mil equivalent per, okay, liter. And also, kapatid, for your chloride, chloride, kapatid, okay, let's have your chloride here at 98 to 106, okay, mil equivalent per uh, liter. And also for your phosphorus, okay, phospho rules okay that's three to four point five milli equivalent per liter and lastly kapatid for your glucose okay this is now uh for your reported lab not anymore of your electrolytes okay it's very important also that we should know your normal glucose levels okay normal glucose levels kapatid that's actually 70 to 110 milligrams per DL. Okay. Okay, let's talk about your renal labs or your renal function markers. Okay, so one of the function kapatid of your kidney is actually so it is it's actually to excrete, no? One of the major function of your kidney is to excrete your wastes. We call them as your nitrogenous, okay, your nitrogenous wastes so they are wastes or actual wastes of the body okay so there are three major nitrogenous wastes of the body we have your first we have your bun or your blood urea and nitrogen your creatinine okay and also um we have other uh wastes sorry uric acid but here kapatid uh generally Two major wastes and one indicator, kapatid, is the function of your uh, kidney as a whole. So we measure that by your GFR. So basically, this one, this is the one that changes, kapatid, kapag meron po tayong uh, kidney damage or kidney failure. Okay, so talking about your normal values, normal value for your BUN, kapatid, that's 10 to 20 milligrams per DL. Okay, while your creatinine, that's actually 0 0.6 to 1.2 milligrams per dl okay and also for your gfr that's 90 to 120 okay ml per minute so this one actually that means for 90 you're already at risk okay at risk for aki or your acute kidney injury and while 120 kapatid 120 kapatid beyond uh normal yan okay so that's it so kapag tumaas naman po ang ating pong dalawang mahahalagang um, waste, uh, I mean the, the waste natin, no? uh, we have your BUN and creatinine. So ibig sabihin that you have, uh, it is an indicator kapag they increase, it is an indicator kapatid na ang ating pong kidney ay nasisira. Why? It's because 
um, one of the functions again of your kidney is excretion of your nitrogenous wastes. So because they cannot be excreted, ibig sabihin kapatid, there is something with the normal functioning of your kidney. Okay? So BU and Encrea are important uh, markers also of your kidney function. Okay. Next, let's have the liver function tests. Okay, class, in your liver function tests, what we need to uh, know here that your kidney has two major functions. I mean, it actually makes some um, substances and it also excretes some sub bodily substances. Okay, so let's now try to know what are those things that are produced or made by the liver okay made by the liver okay so made by the liver again and excreted by the liver so these are two different things okay excreted by liver okay so first kapatid for uh for your um those substances that are produced by the liver so these things class these things here first to be discussed are the things that goes up whenever meron po tayong problem sa ating pong liver. Okay? So, they go up whenever we have your uh, uh, liver problem. First, kapatid, we have your alkaline. Alkaline, tandaan po natin, phosphatase. Okay, alkaline phosphatase. Remember this one. Okay, this is your ALP. Okay? ALP. So, normal levels for this one is 30 to 120 IU per liter. Okay? Another thing that goes up, kapatid, kapag meron din po tayong problem sa ating pong kidney. First one is your aspartate. Aspartate. Okay? Amino transferase. Okay? Amino or amino transferase. Okay? Amino transferase, kapatid. This is your AST. Yeah. So, normal for this one is 0 to 35 IU per liter. And last but not the least, kapatid, it goes up also kapag may problem tayo sa ating liver. We have your alanine. Alanine, kapatid. Amino transferase. Okay? Amino transferase. Okay? Normal for this one. I mean, we call this one as your ALT. And normal for this one. I mean, the normal levels really is... 4 to 36 IU per ml. Okay? So, tandaan po natin yan. Now, aside from that, these things actually goes up. Meron din mga bagay class na bumababa. Okay? Whenever we have your kidney problem. What, so, what are those things? Okay. So, it, what goes down here actually is your total protein. Okay? Total protein. Okay? Total protein. Okay, and normal for this one, kapatid, is 6.4 to 8.3 grams per DL. Okay, grams per DL. Also, kapatid, bumababa to kapag meron tayong problem with your liver, uh, liver, we have your albumin. And normal for this one is 3.5 to 5, okay, grams per DL. So, these are the things, kapatid, na... Um, may kinalaman po sa ating liver Up on the other hand what are those things that are excreted by the liver so two big things what are those first we have your bilirubin okay it is actually excreted by the liver okay so stored in the gallbladder okay and excreted by the liver so um, normal for this one okay less than 1 milligrams per DL and also your ammonia, okay, your ammonia, which is, okay, 15 to 110 micrograms, okay, per DL. Okay, take note of this one, kapatid. Okay? Okay, here let's discuss about your cardiac markers. Yan, so these are your cardiac labs. At kapatid, pag pagdating po dito po sa inyong um, cardiac labs, Two big things. We have your troponin, okay? Troponin and also class your BNP, okay? Your BNP. Okay, so class, first let's discuss about your troponin, okay? So troponin. Class, kapag sinabi natin troponin, 
This is it's actually a group of proteins found in skeletal and cardiac muscle fibers that regulate your muscular construct, uh, contraction. Okay, so this is a, a group of protein. Okay, so that's the fir first thing. Okay, that regulates what? That regulates regulates um, muscular muscular okay muscular contraction okay so specifically your cardiac muscle okay so drop troponin is actually measured okay so this this is actually being tested not to measures the level to measure the level of cardiac specific troponin in the blood to help detect heart injury okay so um what we're going to uh, what what we're looking for troponin is to detect okay to detect your um cardiac specific okay tandaan po natin cardiac specific okay cardiac specific um injury okay so that's it um there are several types of troponin but there's uh we call this as your troponin for the heart and normal is normal kapatid normal okay normal for this one is zero to zero point four big thing for the board examination another thing is we have your bnp okay so which this is what we call as your brain type or your b type brain type or they call it sometimes as b type okay not your not your okay we call it as your brain type not theoretic factor okay tandaan po natin yan okay not theoretic fact uh, peptide rather okay peptide okay so this is your b type not theoretic peptide because i'm quite confused because we have your anf okay so that's another hormone that's actually produced by the heart okay so b bnp is your brain type not theoretic peptide so uh, remember that when there is fluid retention, the heart senses the need to pump harder to move fluid forward and releases your uh, BNP. So what happens in the here, kapatid? If there is increased fluid, okay, when there is an increased fluid, so the heart, okay, increases pumping, okay? So increases pumping. So increased heart rate, increases the strength of pumping, and also, kapatid, it releases your BNP. Okay, it releases your BNP. So this is actually a test done for your big head test for your for your congestive heart failure. Okay, so the normal for this one, normal for this one is actually less than one hundred. Okay, less than one hundred. Those are for your cardiac markers. Okay, so let's discuss another things here. Okay, now let's discuss about your lipid profile. Okay, so we have here, we sometimes call it as your lipid or lipid panel. Okay, lipid or li lipid panel. So what we're going to talk about here, number one, is your total cholesterol. Okay, total cholesterol. Cholesterol. Kapatid, tandaan po natin to. So normal for that is less than 200 milligrams per DL. Okay, so another thing, kapatid, is your HDL. Okay which is your good uh, cholesterol, we have your, um, it should be above 45 milligrams per DL. Okay, how about number three, we have here your LDL, which should be less than 130 milligrams per DL. And last but not the least, for your lipid profile, we have your triglycerides, triglycerides, okay, which your normal should only be 40 to 160 milligrams per dl okay so this is for your lipid panel or for your lipid profile okay so other uh, labs we have your d dimer okay your d dimer kapatid so normal for this uh d dimer is actually less than uh 500 okay less than 500 is your normal for your um Okay, D dimer less than 500. Okay, so this is actually a test. Okay, a, a very simple test, no, uh, that can help our can help our nurses, our medical team, if uh, to determine if you may have a blooding 
or blood clotting condition okay so again this the normal for this one is less than 500 okay nanogram per uh, ml and this is responsible class or for um, this is being tested to see if your patient has a problem in clotting okay so another thing is your CRP okay CRP uh, for normal for this one kapatid okay CRP um, means uh, the C-reactive protein so this is actually a blood test okay done to check for inflammation in your body okay because CRP is actually a protein that is made in the liver and re released in the bloodstream okay so CRP okay is normal for this one is one milligram per DL kapatid okay one milligram per DL and last but not the least we have here your HbA1c okay or we call this as your uh, glycosylated hemoglobin test so big thing for this one very important po na malaman po natin okay what are your normal value i mean normal levels what are your indicators whether the patient is diabetic or non-diabetic okay so these tests actually these tests the uh, glucose okay glucose in the blood okay in the blood for the past of uh, past past three months okay this tests the glucose in the blood in the past three months and it's very important that nurses should be familiar and memorize what are your indications of your hba1c results okay kapatid kapag non-diabetic non-diabetic tandaan po natin non-diabetic that's actually four to five point six percent okay so for pre-diabetes Okay, for pre-diabetes kapatid, that's 5.7 to 6.4%. What While for your diabetic kapatid, for diabetic, it should be more than 6.5%. So, above 6.5, uh, you're candidate for diabetes. And um, you know what? Your target level really for diabetes kapatid should be less than 7. Okay, target level here. Okay for diabetes for diabetes okay should be below seven first percent okay so our for our diabetic patients they're always being tested for hba1c it should be every th every three months or every six months and our target should be below seven percent okay so that's for your hba1c okay so now, kapatid, the most important thing is lalo, lalo na pagdating po sa ating pong uh, board examination and other, uh, also in your NCLEX. Sometimes our examiners will be asking, how are you going to use your glucometer? What are the sequ sequence na gagamitin po natin? What are the sequence na uh, or what are the steps? Okay, first is of course hand hygiene. Okay, so you, you perform hand hygiene. Okay, lalo na pagdating sa NCLEX, that is very, very, NCLEX is very, very specific. Okay, and number two, you need to introduce yourself. Okay, introduce yourself to the client. Okay, so I am nurse, I am buddy, and I will be your nurse for today. And I am here to measure your blood glucose levels through a glucometer. Okay, so number three, insert, insert insert test strip okay insert test strip and number four ensure you need to ensure kapatid number number of what number on the glucometer okay glucometer matches the test strips okay dapat po match yung test strips sa ating pong number in the glucometer kasi may mga uh, compatibility po yan na uh, we need to follow okay and next is collect your blood now okay collect blood and so sometimes we we use your um uh, there are some no na prick method and there are some na parang uh, they just get it from uh, salimbawa sinasabay no in their laboratory but the best uh, at this time 
to also avoid para tama lang din yung makukuha ng amount ng blood natin. We always have this pricker. Okay? And number six, kapatid, apply blood to the strip. Okay? Apply blood. Okay? Apply blood to strip. Okay? Apply blood to strip. And number seven, kapatid, check the result. Okay? Check the result now. And of course, the normal level, again, for this one, should be 70 to 110 milligrams per DL. Okay, remember that one. Okay. L last for your diagnostic tests, we have your amniocentesis. Okay, so kapatid, anong ginagawa natin sa amniocentesis or bakit natin ginagawa to? This one um, looks at, tandaan ninyo, it looks at your genetic genetic disorders okay and neural tube defects okay tinitingnan natin dito ang uh, ating pong genetic disorders at ang ating pong mga neural tube defects so these are actually congenital problems okay so this is actually invasive procedure so tandaan po natin yan this is an invasive procedure and it requires Ang pinakamalagang tandaan po natin kapag invasive, it whether or not it will require a consent. So, for your invasive procedure, so it requires, of course, consent or informed consent. Okay? Informed consent. So, remember this one. Okay? Because there is a high risk, high risk to the baby or to the fetus. Okay. So, this can be done in your out outpatient basis okay done on OPD yan so tandaan po natin what we'll be using here is a long thin okay needle yan inserted okay inserted to extract to extract anong extract natin dito okay small amount small amount of okay amniotic fluid Okay, amniotic fluid. Okay, so assess if rogam is needed for the mother here. Okay, so rogam is a type of actually, okay, assess if rogam, okay, rogam is needed, okay, for, for whom? For the mother. Okay, so kapatid, uh, again, for um, your amniocentesis, um, these are the things that we need to consider here. Um, first, it's we need to think that it's an invasive procedure, so informed consent is needed. Risk for fetus is there. So again, um, uh, and also it is done OPD, uh, could be outpatient. So we use here long thin needle capated inserted to the to the. Um, to extract, okay, to extract your small amount of amniotic fluid. Okay, so this assess, uh, please assess for um, if there's a need for the mother to um, be to, to, to take a shot of rogam. Okay, so this is actually rogam is okay. Rogam is a is a shot. No, it is um, a shot given to pregnant people or pregnant women whose blood is negative for rhesus factor. Okay? Kapag hindi compatible po sa kanyang baby, halimbawa si baby is, or si mother is RH uh, positive, and then si baby naman kapatid is RH negative. So, um, there is what we call as your RH compatibility. So, there's a need for um, rogam shot. Okay? So, assess for the need of this one.